Hello guys and uh, welcome back to uh, the Extended Pentagon Challenge. This is episode 21 and uh, we are still with FBC Melgar in Peru and uh, Nigeria also. Um, so something, uh, it's, it's quite strange actually, The um, uh, so this, this has obviously reset in the last episode we saw that. Um, but uh, you know, I, I guess one thing that seems to still be, it, it still seems to be affecting the players because I've had three of my players ask for transfers because we weren't living up to expectations in the league. So really a bit annoying. But um, anyway, we'll we'll overlook that and continue. So if we go just go through the fixtures, um, whilst we left off, we just played the first game of the uh, of the second round against Cristal where we won 5-2 in a very impressive result uh, next up we had uh, Atletico Torino and uh, we won that game by 3 goals to nil Panduro, Bazan and Bagaza with the goals so a handy win for us there um, we then, uh, we're at home to um, Juan Ulrich and somehow managed to lose the game uh, Herman Romero getting their goal two sendings off for us uh, Dan, uh, Danilino and uh, Brian Uriel just before the end a uh, game we dominated, uh, and a, a game we ended up in, on the losing side. Uh, uh, Juan Oric uh, certainly lucky to get away with the three points that day. Um, we then moved on to uh, Alf Alfonso Ugarte away. Uh, always a difficult team to play, and they took the lead through Toto. Uh, a bit against the run of play, but Pablo Viola uh, getting a rare goal um, as uh, we responded, and it ended in a draw. Again, a game I think uh, we should have probably won, uh, all things being equal. So. A draw there, so a little bit of drop, a little drop in form, but we recovered again with a very important and very handy win against Cesar Vallejo, uh, with a one nil win. Uh, Gene Kamahara, six minutes from the end, getting the only goal of the game, as we uh, we won uh, very impressively against Cesar Vallejo. You know, showed a lot of uh, tenacity to get uh, that win. Uh, next up was uh, Sport Huancayo at home. Uh, Gerson Pandura with Papandura with two. Uh, Eduardo Avila did get one back for them, but Luca Pontigo making the point safe uh, 12 minutes from time. And again, a game we dominated. And uh, it's the disappointing thing, I think, is to do with, you know, our opponents, when they have shots on goal, they seem to be able to find the net. Whereas it takes us quite a lot more shots on, on target uh, to, to find the net. So, yeah, a 3 1 win, and you can't, uh, can't uh, turn your nose up at that. And then uh, we went away to University Universidad San Martin, lost two nil. Shouldn't have lost two nil at all. Um, we we dominated the game, but uh, Paul, Paul Rojas and uh, Abed Lozano getting the goals. The only two shots they had on target, and the only and two goals enough for them. Uh, we were quite wasteful in this game, and uh, San Martin did have more possession, um, but I still think you know two nil is a flattering scoreline. Um, we then uh, lost to Cristal um, away um, by three goals to one. Uh, Daniel Mohamed, Cesar Medina and Osnar Osna Noronha putting them 3-0 up. Uh, we did respond with Luca Pontigo, but a really poor performance, one of our poor, poorest performances of the season. And uh, Yeah, so we, uh, we end up losing that game by three goals to one. So disappointing. Two losses back to back, but then responding magnif nah, magnificent magnificently against uh, Juan Ulrich, uh with a five-one win. Um, a Jefferson Gavea own goal got us on our way. Felipe Brito then scored. Uh, Rene Flores responded just before half time for Juan Ulrich to make things interesting, but uh, it didn't really uh, help them in the end. Luca Pontigo then making it 3 1, a Gallardo pen penalty making it 4 1, and Felipe Brito finishing off the scoring to make it 5 1 to us uh, in a very, very impressive performance against a, a good side in Juan Ulrich uh, and you know, dominant performance as well. Um, Next up was uh, Atletico Torino at uh, home. 3-1 uh, win, uh, Thiago with two, Luca Pontigo with one. Uh, Wall uh, Joel Galicchio getting uh, one back for Atletico Torino right at the end. But you can see absolutely dominant performance. Only shot Atletico had went in, but uh, 34 shots, 12 on target. You know, we really did uh, batter them this day. Um, Alfonso Garte at home. A win would mean that we would be uh, free to the final um, with three games to go, and we got that right at the end. Gene Kamahara, he scores so many important goals for us. 
uh, just normally starts off the bench but today, this time started the game got that really really important goal for us and um, we won the game 1-0 and we are free to the next round. Uh, Cesar Vallejo home, a very impressive performance against a good side. Cesar Vallejo have, uh, of course has problems in the past, but a 3-0 uh, win, uh, showing our dominance. Uh, Pablo Viola with two uh, un unexpected goals. He doesn't score many uh, for a striker. Eduardo Gallardo with a penalty, also uh, cementing the 3-0 win as uh, we surpassed uh, Cesar Vallejo on the day. Next up, Sports Huay Juan Cayo, and uh, a bit of a disappointing uh, result, really. Uh, they got the lead through Better the Silver. I had no idea how they, they, they did get the lead because we you know we were so dominant up till then. We were dominant after that as well, and Felipe Brito did get a sequel as we couldn't find a way through to get that winner, and in the end, it finished 1 all. Next up was uh, Universidad de San Martin, um, a three-one win to finish off the the uh, the, ra the uh, second phase. Uh, Danilo with an early goal, uh, Gerson Pandura either side of half time, getting giving us a three-nil lead. As uh, then Minzum Queen uh, getting a consolation goal for Universidad San Martin, uh, but uh, you know dominant performance again, and and we were f we were champions, and this is the way the uh, the league actually finished. Um, <coughs> Uh, if you just want pure league, that's how technically uh, it finished. Uh, in my book, we're already champions, that we should be, because uh, we stormed the league in it, or for all, uh, for all accounts. Uh, in the groups, this is how it ended up. Um, Melgar, 99 points, a fantastic total for the season, um, really, have to say. Uh, Afonso Ugarte finished second in our in our side. Cristal and then Universidad de San Martin, a little bit behind. Alianza did do enough to um, to play us in the final, and uh, this is in fact a two-legged affair. So we'll be play So I'll be showing that both those games live, albeit that there will be a break in the videos in between, uh, so I look up their team and do a little bit of homework uh, about how I maybe nullify them. But uh, so and then a uh, bit behind Alianza was Jose Galvez. Um, the interesting thing actually about. Um, uh, Alianza was that they offered me their their job. Um, their manager has been uh, effectively offered was offered the uh, Colombia job, which he accepted, which left them uh, in a bit of a strange position. Um, we know top of their so top of group uh, group B, but without a manager, and they were shopping around for a manager, and uh, <coughs> they offered it to me first. And uh, some of the answers I gave in the interview probably went against the the grain, such as direct. You know, they wanted to play direct football, which I wasn't prepared to do. Um, and a few things like that. So uh, in the end, they didn't offer it to me. They offered it to uh, the Jose Galvez manager, actually, which I'm sure they won't thank um, Alianza's management for. Um, so Julio Zamora became the new manager of uh, Alianza, and he'll be our opponent in the final, um, so to speak. So perhaps has he earned that? Well, probably not. But will he may well be work walking away with a uh, a Copa Movistar um, for little change, really. Next up, uh, I'll show you Nigeria, and uh, things actually were a bit disappointing in the end. Um, so we uh, we had played Scotland uh, last time, and uh, we then followed up with uh, the final group game um, of, of the second round uh, as we beat Ethiopia by four goals to two. Uh, Daniel uh, they actually took lead for Abraham Bassani. Uh, Daniel Obagi responded pretty quickly after that. Uh, Akin Fenwa Festus got a, a, a put us two one up. Mohamed Suleiman, who gets a lot of criticism for being in a squad because he doesn't play for a big club, but gets a fair number of goals, got a goal. And Daniel Obagi just before that had got the third, as Mohamed Salamin got the fourth. Um, <coughs> if you ever get one back, nine minutes from time through uh, get at you. But uh, a solid win as we progress to the next round. In the next round, we would face Morocco. Um, but before that, we had a friendly against Senegal. And a very impressive performance, actually, as we won 2-1. Uh, Daniel Abadji got us going uh, really early on with uh, an 18th-minute goal. Mohamed Suleiman then uh, scored uh, with uh, 11 minutes to go to give us a, uh, a you know a handy lead going into final 10 minutes Dubi Okoli did, did end up scoring uh, or in, in, unfortunately in the wrong net as the Senegal got one back from uh, you know kind of uh, the ball pinging around the box Kaledu Koulibaly uh, brought down um, one of our players I can't remember exactly who but he got himself sent off and it was a penalty which George Monday actually missed and uh, in the end we were solid we were pretty dominant a good win against a good side and uh, we'll take that all day long so next up we would face Morocco in that uh, all important uh, kind of qualifiers you know the winner would go through to the World Cup and uh, a great performance away is we you know we took the lead early I played counter 
Um, Delhi Bala got got us a goal, and Renan Mohamed just pulling one back right at the end um, to to really you know rescue a point or res not a point but rescue uh, uh, something for Morocco going into the second leg. But I was very happy with that performance. So were the fans. But uh, it all went downhill very quickly after that. Um, we we were just tr tremendously bad in this game. Um, we lost three nil uh, at home. Um, really, I, I I started off with the control tactic. I thought you know you know we're at home. We should be able to to, to play control. You know Morocco aren't exactly Brazil or Argentina. So, but it it, it just went badly. And uh, Ryan El Amar El, El Amri. At El Amrani scored uh, after 20 minutes, so it gets to run a play, and then they just kept hitting us on the break. As Reda Mohamed, you know, picked up a great, a great, uh, a great brace there. Uh, Lukman Haruna, as you know, got himself sent off when we were trying to, you know, searching for something to pull us back into the game. Uh, so really disappointed in him, and really disappointed in the team, really. And you know, in the end, we uh, we were just so poor. Um, <coughs> The board, the the uh, the the chairman uh, of the FA actually took it pretty pretty well uh, um, in the end. Uh, you know they they consider Morocco to be a, a good enough side that uh, it, you know to, going out to them was not actually uh, a, you know a super bad performance. Uh, but I was furious. I thought we should be in that World Cup and um, and we're not going to be unfortunately. And uh, that's the way it goes. I think. Um, so they decided they actually weren't going to sack me, uh, but the results had to improve, and we uh, we got an away friendly win against Malawi. Probably expected to beat them anyway. Um, Delhi Bala got a got a goal. Akinama Festus got another, and then George Monday just before half time as we uh, led three 0 going in. Uh, Luca uh, Milanzi uh, actually got one back for them as uh, as uh, they 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 got a consolation, but uh, a solid win for us and uh, and in the end uh, you know small comfort for uh, not making to n not making the World Cup. Anyway, guys, um, I think I'll just quickly show you the players and how they've been doing. Um, as you can see from this, uh, not go. No, what am I doing there? Put that there. So Hugo Seminario. Uh, and Gerson Pandura, really, uh, Gerson Pandura and Luca Pontigo, uh, stand up performances. Um, Pandura 23 in the league, very good, uh, um, very good return really, uh, considering Luca Pontigo with 17, also a good return, and Felipe Brito as well with a good return of 17. So the, the three main strikers have been hit in the back of the net, that's you know 57 goals between them, uh, as they've been really uh, filling in the majority of the goals for us. Um, so you know you you can look at it yourself. Um, I think generally you know it's been a very good uh, performance, a good good team. Uh, Tiago actually wants to leave because of that stupid bug. Uh, some club in Korea wants him. Uh, Jean Kamahara is wanted by also <laughs> Jeju, who seems to be uh, out after our players. Um, but yeah, Luca Pontigo actually wants to, wanted to uh, to go. He's unhappy or was unhappy. He's now no longer unha unhappy. The way they've coded this Peruvian league makes absolutely no sense to me. It seems like it's completely fluctuating. So, you know, we are going at, the, at every point during the stages. As so, you, when you move from the first stage to the second stage, they assume you've done crap. So everyone starts getting you back until you play your first game, and everyone's like, "Oh well, actually, you're doing all right." And then when the second stage ends, then again everyone gets on your back uh, because you know the game thinks, "Oh wait a minute, they I don't know how to how to work out whether they've done well or badly," and again everything. So you end up getting these transfer requests, um, so which this guy's still pissed off about, you know. Um, oh no, he's unhappy with the training workload. You unhappy? What are you unhappy with, considering his options? Well. He he did our hand in a transfer request, but uh, you know I, I well he's not going anywhere. Let's put it like that. Anyway, guys, um, I'm gonna so you're not gonna it's not gonna be uh, any time for you, but um, for me it's gonna be probably about 25 minutes as I look through the Alianza's team um, before the first leg, and I'll just show you that yeah there are actually two legs to come, and uh, there'll be. Uh, on the 27th, so in a few days' time, away, and then we'll be at home against Alianza. So let's see if we can uh, actually uh, do anything with this. Hi guys, and uh, welcome back to the Extended Pentagon Challenge. Uh, we're still at FBC Melgar. Um, 
this is still the same pot for you that no time has passed but uh, for me it's been three days and in that time I've managed to uh, get a rather sore throat so uh, I'll try and keep the uh, the shouting and the raw, you know the uh, the horrible voice to a minimum as uh, we move into the uh, well the 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 final against Alianza and uh, yeah we basically uh, this is what our season has culminated in um, two games against the uh, the best team in the league and uh, it's going to be a difficult one um, I'm still thinking do I go for the rather ballsy you know control or do I go counter and assume that um, we can actually you know pick them off away from home um, it brings me back to the Nigeria uh, game which I had whereby uh, well we we obviously did really well away um, you know we were leading up until kind of seven minutes to go and that was with the counter tactic um, and then we went you know at home we, we tried to obviously tighten the screw on uh, Morocco and it, it just all fell apart really so I'm quite um, I'm quite keen to avoid a similar repeat um, what I'll be doing is I'll just save beforehand um, I've been having a load of crashes and I don't want to re-record uh, this part of the video really um, so let's do that uh, just quickly so yeah I mean regardless of the result I think I will be staying in Peru for another season at least um, it's been quite an enjoyable league so far um, I don't really like the fact that it kind of ends in a kind of a final and a kind of an MLS kind of deal um, simply because I don't think it's you know I don't think Alianza merit a chance of winning the title this season I think we've been superior I think the points total says that we've been superior and I think you know we should be handed a title simply put uh, but you get a lot of leagues that work like this um, Peru is actually more it seems to be more difficult simply because it has a <coughs> it has a obviously there's no kind of uh, uh, clausura and uh, apertura uh, in the wrong order uh, so let me just clear. Yeah, let's have we done the quick bit there. Tiago, Gallardo, Danilo, uh, Brito, Tontigo. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, I think that'll do. And uh, if we go to the game, let's go counter for the tactic. And let's see how this works. So, Ali answer away. Difficult game. Um, we'll see how we do. I think what I'll do is I'll play this game and then I'll have another break and then we'll play the second game and then we'll see whether we're champions. Um, still think it's going to be difficult. Um, we you know at the end of the day we're uh, we're probably despite the league performance still outside us. I think Alianza beat us pretty much every time they played us. Uh, where you know not necessarily always deserved, um, but you know we've got a chance to avenge that. I guess. Let me just check key. Yeah, that's all good. And let's start the game. <coughs> so, uh, Canizales to Grounder, uh, Villa Marin, uh, Vega. This is Alianza's attack here, and it's lost there, uh, Deanderis, but that's the end of the, the highlight. And Alianza starting very well with four shots. We've had one, so uh, they're pretty much putting on the pressure in this final. Seminario, Gagliardo, uh, Pontigo, that was a bit of a poor ball. Otoya. On the ball, Manco. Manco to Villamarin. Villamarin straight to Flores. Flores with a long ball forward. Cubayo. Oh, good save. And uh, they kind of uh, turned the screw on us here. Vega. And away. It's one of those where you, you know, you'll know you take 1 0. Panduro. Maybe a chance to counter here. He's got space to run into. Panduro into Brito. Brito, can you cross? Go on. Oh, Thiago shot just over half chance there. Always a difficult one, kind of on the volley. As you're in for Melgar, Seminario down the wing. Hits it straight, Panduro with a flick on. Brito gets there. Oh, just puts it wide. That was a proper chance, that one. He probably should have put that in the back of the net. And that's disappointing. And we've kind of fought back a little, little period of dominance for us. Brito takes it nicely. Can he find a cross? Panduro's in there. Panduro's got a lot of men behind around him. Oh, penalty. Is it? Yes. That's a penalty. We've got a chance to get an away goal. Gallardo. 
she puts it in the back of the net and that's 1-0 to Melgar a brilliant start and obviously we'll be keeping with the counter tactic it's not necessarily come against the run of play I think we're a little bit lucky to get that penalty um, you know I think we're lucky to be in the lead really so Grander to uh, Cowardio Vega Vega could he lose it there Ooh, close Brito had him Otoya Vega Castro on the ball and that's away from Thiago but only as far as Grander Grander can set off Cowardio Cowardio inside to Flores he's got space now Vega can turn lose it though Thiago Brito can he set the attack going oh he has Panduro with a beautiful touch shoots but wide and uh, really he probably had better options there instead of the shot but uh, we won't be too disappointed with this I mean it's been so far pretty good <coughs> and uh, yeah so we'll we'll take this all day long really um, let's obviously give him a bit of a pep talk and uh, yeah I'm not going to change it from counter I think you know that's a perfect tactic now 1-0 up and uh, really I think we can obviously just sit on this I'll take 1-0 all day long really so let's see what the first real highlight is who will it fall to is the question and I think at some point I'm going to make a few changes so never Seminario that's the no one Villa Marin can get that away easily Ojeda and they can break now Ortiz and Coadio's a little bit in oh good tackle well done Sanchez away Pontiga to Brito Brito looks for the pass Seminario's there didn't see him at first Seminario can he cross he has it's away Bagazio oh gotta be Goliardo's got his second it's 2-0 in the final and who would have thought that we could you know it's been so easy Alianza haven't really created a lot and uh, suddenly we find ourselves 2-0 up at the home of the champions the, f the free time champions in a row really and uh, this is working out very nicely at the moment Pontigo beautiful goes through but the shot is wayward and I think we might well, I think we'll wait another 5 or 10 minutes to make a change I don't want to overshoot it go let's bring on um, don't really have a net well we can put Bagazzo onto the onto the right bring on Brian Uriel and uh, let's bring on Bazan and let's let's go go ahead and it's still 2-0 this will be a famous win puts us in a beautiful position going to the sec second leg Uriel Oh, can't find Brito. Ortiz, Canizales. Surely there's not a lot of time left. We need to hold out here. Keep it. Oh, nice tackle. Canizales crosses in, and that's going to be away from Sanchez. Surely Pontigo can break here, and he just gets rid of that, and that's not a bad decision, really, considering we're two goals up here. Against the champion, it's all over. And uh, Melgar win, and uh, a very nice win as well. You know, we played superbly, really. And I'm very happy to say that in the first leg we're two 0 up going into the final. Um, so let's see the uh, the reaction to that. Gallardo the hero, and uh, fans are jubilant. They're ex surely now expecting that we're going to take this title home. Um, so guys, I'll uh, I'll just uh, quickly pause again, and then uh, we'll show you the second leg um, against Allianz uh, this time at home. And you know, I'm expecting that we should be able to take this title. But uh, stranger things have happened. So uh, catch me. Well, for you, it'll be no time. It'll just it'll just be one episode. This, you know, the the first part, the second part, and the third part. Um, but yeah, for me, it'll be probably a little bit of time anyway. So yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the second leg. Hi guys, and uh, welcome back to the uh, extended Benfica challenge. And this is the second leg. Um, we're now uh, obviously going to try and uh, take this title home <coughs> I've actually been thinking um, I'm in two minds actually um, I don't know whether to um, new record there for uh, you know, I don't know whether to play counter or attack uh, part of me thinks the correct tactic is uh, standard so the uh, the count the control tactic um, simply because we're at home and you know technically speaking I expect them on an, in a normal game that we you know will will be looking to have a more of the attack. Pasquale de Caro. Yeah, he's pretty good in the Uruguayan, twenty years old. 
doing the job for Torino. So yeah, so we'll have more of the tap. But I know that Alianza, obviously because of the uh, the match situation, they need to uh, come to us effectively. Oh, job offer from a Santiago Wanderers. CD Santiago Wanderers. Info. Media prediction seven. Petrobras Primera, which is the main division. Hmm. This is an interesting one, Sebastian Paul. Do I do I just ah? Uh, this is a difficult one. So what, I'll take the interview because there's no point not taking the interview, and then we can get down to business. God, that's a you transfer the budget. Uh, yeah, I'll take that all day long. Wage budget fifty k. Wage bill is seventy k. Seventeen k. Fucking hell. Sorry, I shouldn't swear that. Um, yeah, that's bloody hell. That's a lot of money. They're, they're obviously they're owned by some sort of a uh, by some sort of like massive. Uh, Billionaire or something. Um, moderately agree, strongly agree. Sign young players to the first team. Hmm. Don't know if I can agree. Develop players using that. Sign players from chairman's own nation. I don't even know where the chairman's from. Moderately agree, disagree with possession football. Well, I'll go for none then. Not really that bothered. I'm, I mean, my view is. <coughs> in many respects I don't think I'll be taking this job I want a shot at the um, at the Copa Libertadores although I think they're a good side uh, Santiago Wanderers 7th place could probably do quite a lot with them um, this guy's a bloody good goalkeeping coach actually he's a good goalkeeping coach for this level shame he's retiring anyway time to um yeah, time to uh to move. oh I meant to go to the back room meeting actually. That's a bit annoying. Back room meeting, yeah, let's do it, yeah. Dismiss, dismiss, start individual training. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess Alex Otero, one star, not definitely not signing him. Veggie's out. Um, to be honest, I've got a two-year contract, haven't I? Got a normal two-year contract in effect. So I'm there till 2023. I don't feel the need to sign a new contract at this point. So I'm going to decline the talks. <coughs> <coughs> I don't think we need to uh, talk to the, the board about it. I mean, maybe they'll get a bit pissed off and uh, maybe uh, uh, get rid of us. But, you know, well, if that happens, that happens. Will use in the uh, 47 million Chelsea player. I mean, Chelsea have been doing absolutely brilliantly in this game. It's absolutely ludicrous. Thomas Miller, where's he now? Still at Bayern. 32. Messi must be pretty old. 34, yeah. Aguero. Still at City. Hazard, Chelsea. Yeah, it's just quality. Um, as the manager of Nigeria, you've been invited to cost your Okay. I will do it by the book. Well, I won't actually, because I. Ginter. So at Ginter. Tell you what, Messi's won it a ton of times. This Ginter guy looks pretty decent. He's had a very good season. Let's give Ginter the, uh, the go ahead. So. Ginter. Then I'll, I will vote for Messi, I think. Well, actually, I'll give him the one. He don't need my help. He'll probably win it anyway. Then I'll Messi. And then Aguero. He's a young player. There's a no age. He's got the most goals. Timo Werner. Timo Werner. Don't think. Giovanni Simeone. 
is he the guy? Is he anyway in any way related to uh, Diego Simeone? Yeah, that's crazy. He's actually quality. Did not know about this guy. He's absolute quality. Let's give it to Giovanni Simeone since he's a uh, father. And also, does, does that mean his father's still managing the club? That would be an interesting one. Is he still at Atletico? Yeah, he is. Yeah. But that's an interesting one. Okay. Calf footballer. Gotta be honest, I'm not that bothered. Uh, let's go with the way it's going. Uh, Gaye. Uh, Sally. Uh, Alfred Duncan, Andre Ayew, he's a good player that guy normally. Dace must be pretty old now because he wouldn't normally be at, at Genoa at this stage, I don't know. Alan Neom, yeah done, not that bothered, no Nigerians in there. What about in here? One Nigerian, Let's, uh, Olufemi, he's definitely going to... Go, oh, I can't. Ah, oh, you bastards. I think he's going to win it. So I'm going to not vote for Gaia. I'm going to vote for tactical voting. I'm going to vote for goal scorers. So let's give it to Galal, Saidi, and Abdel. <coughs> anyway, that's a bit of a distraction. Um, let's get to the final, really. That's what I. That's what we're here for. It's the final, and uh, hopefully we can take this home. And oh no, Olafemi suffered a bit of a setback. What's that? Is that guy Mario Noga? Nah, you're not that good. Okay, guys, December the fifth is tomorrow. It's the final, and we could be uh, champions. God, I hope we do. Oh, unsuccessful. Uh, if you if you carried out the decide to get your job, so satisfied with your club vision, but decide you weren't the right person, Hector Tapia. It's absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Okay. Here we go. Alianza away. In fact, let me just break. I need a, I need a few minutes. Right, sorry for that guys, I just need to go and do something quickly. Um, anyway, we're right near the, the next match, so uh, let's go right ahead. Um, yeah, not too bothered about that. So yeah, here we are, it's the final. It's the final second leg. Um, now I've been thinking about this. If I go counter, so let's think about it logically. Allianz need two goals um, to force extra time. If they get three, we then need to score effectively four. Well, on, on on aggregate, but two on the night. I guess what I haven't decided, I think I'm going to go counter, simply because I think they'll have to attack me. But I don't know what I'll do if they go one or two goals up. Um, I think then that's you know that's a difficult situation. Uh, because it's, you know, it's a stick or twist, really. Uh, anyway, I'm pretty happy with the team. I think that's the team that won. Um, let, let's go with counter. Let's see whether we can this can get the job done. Otherwise, um, yeah, we might need to think of something else. I think it, it, it's it's the best chance we've got, really. I think keeping things nice and tight uh, will will mean that we've we've effectively got the best chance of going through. It means the Alliance will have to open up. We obviously play a tactic that's going to be set up to counter them, and uh, you know I think that's probably the best you, the best situation really for for all parties really. Um, so we still got uh, that there, and yeah, let's, so let's go to the game. So the second leg kicks off. Melgar lead by two goals to nil, and a Seminario is on the ball, and uh, Gallardo forwards to Pontigo, Pontigo to Panduro, Panduro into Brito. Early start could be a goal. Oh, that was a very early start there for Melgar, and it should have been one nil, and that would have surely put. Uh, you know, Alianza's hopes of winning the game um, to a very, very slim then, uh, but uh, still, uh, still nil nil here, and uh, we're we're hoping, we're we're hoping that uh, we can hold on to this. 
later picks it up. Oh, good ball, Cavadio. Oh, he's in here, and Vega scores. Was he offside? No, he was not, and that has now put the cat amongst the pigeons for Melgar. That's you know a very poor goal to concede, and suddenly the nerves are going to be kicking in. I think we stay counter for now. I think we stay counter. I think it's still it's working. I don't know why they're having so much. They're not having more of the ball. That's a poor kick out. I'll tell you what, if Brito had just been able to control that and have a shot, he might have actually uh, been in with a chance at Leto. Leto to Vega. Vega puts in Flores. Flores, good save from Azurin. Keeps Melgar in the game. Alianza not with many chances, but the, probably the best chance of the game as they look for that second goal to tie things up in this, in this tie. And uh, Melgar uh, probably should have taken the chance. Thiago, it comes out to Pandura. Pandura, Danny Lino. Thiago into the box. Pandura, oh, it's there. It's it's Pontigo, in fact, and it's and it's the equaliser. Just a near post, post header, and uh, Melgar put another one past Alianza, and it's 3-1, and, and that means Alianza need two goals, but two goals would win the game, win the tie overall. And uh, Pontigo now, looking for Seminari, he's making the run, out on the wing, there's men over, there's three men over, if he can just find a, one of them, oh, and he plays a terrible ball to Ojeda. And uh, now, chance to carry out Flores, oh, good tackle there, Brito back, and he gets Red Granda on the ball, Villa Marin. There were men over there for uh, Melgar, but they just, just couldn't find them. Panduro, Gallardo, Gallardo looking for the winger, Pontigo, oh he's got a man over, surely, if he can find him, Brito, 2-1 on the night, it's a fantastic counter-attacking move, as uh, Alianza were just opened up and it was, you know, so easy in the end, and this could spell the end really for Alianza, they now need another three goals on the night, Ojeda, into the box, away from Sanchez, Duclos, Coadio, Granda, scores, two all on the night, two goals required for Alianza, Jose Granda gets an important goal, as Alianza still looking uh, for this, they've, they've certainly been on the attack, but unfortunately they've left it pretty open at the back, Daniel Inez having an absolute shocker, 4.8 rating, I think I might need to look at Gene Kamahara maybe coming on for the second half, that's absolutely shocking. Thiago, Gallardo, Gallardo to Panduro, Panduro, Pontigo, Pontigo at the Seminario, Seminario, lose it, oh, but retains it, Gallardo, Thiago, Panduro, Pontigo, Panduro, Brito, oh, good save, had a really good shot there, comes back to Panduro, oh, another great save, and uh, the, uh, the Alianza keeper, keeping Alianza in this, really, <coughs> So not bad, good attacking, poor defensively. Dan Danielino's having one of the worst games I've ever seen him play. And a 4.8 rating. That's got to be a mistake or two in there. Um, and I think you know 4.8 is probably good enough to bring him off really. Gene Kamahara, I think Ray Alva as well for Thiago. I think he's he's run his race. <coughs> we need a bit of um, you know energy in that midfield now. As we try to hold on to all here, Duclos for Alianza, two all, 4 2 on aggregate to Melgar, and Seminario on the ball, Seminario to Pontigo. Pontigo, what a run! Oh, but the shot was wayward. He just managed to find a little gap there to, to have a little shot on goal, but you know, at the, in, in the end, he sliced it wide. And Seminario. Again, he's just rampaging down this wing whenever he can. Gallardo, Alva, the substitute. Bagazzo. Bagazzo looking for the pass. Into Alva. Alva looking for the for the ball but can't find it. Ojeda away. This could be a good chance for Alianza. Alianza puts Coadia through, but Bagazzo recovers nicely. And uh, Alva again playing this this very slow, uh, fought out style of football. That, uh, that has made Melgar so successful. Gallardo racing forward. Brito back to Camahara. Gallardo, Alva. Alva inside to Brito. Brito to Panduro. That is a pure brilliant team move. Not Panduro. Pontigo gets another 3 2 to Melgar. That's got to be curtains. 
and just an absolutely selfless touch there from Brito puts in Pontigo and it's surely game over now and they're just gonna bring on Juan Mayo to, uh, to solidify things in the back Melgar heading for their first title since 1961 I believe uh, when they won the Copa Peru and it's phenomenal really and Seminari plays a really wayward ball, Coadio looking to at least give Alianza an outside chance of pulling this back Coadio crosses as Jurin's got that all day long unfortunately for Alianza fans and it looks like it was not going to be a fourth title in a row for Alianza as Melgar have pulled off a bit of a tactical masterclass really, you know they've been money on the counter attack and Alianza have been hit several times, they've got their two goals but unfortunately the counter attack has, has put pay to uh, the chances that they had later <coughs> they got Ortiz, Ortiz to Coadio, oh another great save from Azurin who's been on top form today and uh, Vega with the corner Vega only as far away as Otoya Otoya to Vega again and away by Mayo and this time oh Medina had a great chance in the box if he'd scored might have given Alianza some hope but it's all but over here Pontinho runs it away and the ball goes over the keeper's head and it looks like it'll be a corner but it's already time run and that's it Melgar are Peruvian champions Alianza are beaten and it's a fantastic achievement by the boys um, in the end 5-1 to one aggregate 3 to on the night enough for Melgar to uh, win the title and yeah I believe it's the first one since 1961 and uh, apparently says our Rivas to the Peruvian football press I thought Melgar would have would have enough to come through this tie especially you have to win the first leg they've taken care of business here so um, yeah in the end um, Coadio actually got 31 goals Pandura with 23 definitely helped us along by no means the top goal scorer so again you know we're not hitting the same you know those heights of you know having a top goal scorers and the top assist makers but it's very very good team performance and uh, yeah we're champions we've done it in Peru first season it's an absolutely fantastic um, effort I must say I'm very very happy with the way this season has gone uh, Salazar brings success uh, to Melgar fans uh, even as perennial contenders for uh, the Torneo Decentralizado the Football Profesional de Peru FBC Melgar had not won the competition since 1981 sorry 81 not 61 playing under the guidance of fans favourite Sandres Salazar however the Melgar players have now brought glory to the buoyant fans uh, always capable of winning it and they are happy with the achievement the board are now keen that, uh, to ensure that Salazar is able to, uh, to concentrate on, f on preparing for future challenges Melgar rises to the challenge uh, in front of 50,000 Pontigo on form this guy's done very well actually he's, he's been a superb buy um, for me and I'm very happy to have him in the team jubilant after that and uh, yeah let's just do the, the press conference and uh, we're given 108k and more importantly we qualify for the 2022 Copa Libertadores will qualify in the uh, in the group stages I believe the uh, the competition kicks off in January so pretty soon actually um, but yeah, so you know, obviously, uh, Copa Libertadores is a you know a four and a half star rated tournament. Definitely um, want to have a season in that. I don't really hold out much chance that we'll ever you know we'll win it. I'm not sure if Peruvian club has ever actually won the, the tournament. Olympia won it in 1990. That's Paraguayan. Uh, just looking back through the seasons, Olympia. Actually, it doesn't look like it. I don't think. I don't think Peruvian clubs ever got. Only Vicitario once got to the final. Uh, yeah, and I think Union Española when they Chilean. Okay. So yeah, guys, we're champions of Peru. Um, there's only one trophy in Peru. Let's just quickly go and see our profile. Uh, sorry, career achievements, which should now show a. Yep, a with Melgar, a Peruvian title uh, winners 2021. Um, so, for some reason, I can't I, because of the the change of uh, skin. I can't now see. Oh no, I can. There we go. Oh, that's not good. 
it ch the skin change must have reset this. Uh, that's no good. I don't like that. That's actually really annoying. Um, wow. Let me just quickly actually change that back to. Um, see if I can change that back to the normal skin. And see if that kind of. So that's the normal skin, base skin. See if that actually, you know, brings that back because that's really annoying if that's all gone. Um, you know, obviously it doesn't it doesn't ever leave our uh, our achievements, so we we can always use our achievements and remember that we didn't win the FC Cup. We actually won the Hong Kong division. Uh, for some reason, that bug um, happened, and I I don't know why it got confused. Uh, but that's going to be really annoying actually if uh, if that's the way that ends up. So I was actually, you know, looking to track as time went on how well we did, and to obviously miss the first kind of few. No, that's we completely screwed us. We have lost all our data, uh, which is bent. Uh, I don't know why that happened. There's a lot of bugs in this game. I've got to admit, there's like bugs after bugs. It seems to me like random ones as well that I keep finding. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's an absolutely fantastic game, but um, just a bit annoying some of this stuff that, that keeps happening where in you know, the Peruvian problems and and, uh, and yeah. But anyway, um, as you saw in the achievement section, we have won the Copper Movie Star, and uh, this was episode 21, a rather longer episode, split in several parts, unfortunately, for you guys. Um, yeah, I'll try and keep it to, you know, normal parts uh, as per normal. And uh, yeah, so. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we are the Peruvian champions, and uh, I'll be back with you next season with uh, Melgar, probably for the final a uh, final season. Um, not only to win, try and win the uh, Copa Movistar again, but also to see if we can do anything in the Copa Libertadores. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you next time.